Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll solve problem number 105 and 106. Problem number 105, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? We are told or we are being asked rather, what is the present age, what's the present age of a man who three years ago, who three years from now rather, not three years ago, who three years from now will be thrice as old as his son. Thrice as old, we learned about thrice in our vocabulary lessons. In our vocabulary lesson on day number 63, in our vocabulary lesson, day number 63, we learned about thrice, which is just a very fancy way of saying three times as old. So one more time. We are told, we are being asked, what's the present age of a man who three years from now will be thrice as old, will be three times as old as his son who happens to be S years old today. The son happens to be S years old today. The very first thing we need to understand here is what is given and what is being asked. What is, being, what is given here is the son's age. This is not an unknown quantity. This is a known quantity. We are being told that he is S years old. Whenever we are told something, even though it represents a variable, even though this is, this, is, this is not a number, it is a known quantity. So what is unknown here is the father's age. That's what we are solving for. And because that's what the question is. What's the, what's the present age of father? So let's do that. Here's our solution. So that's how we're going to define, that's how, our, that's how we're going to define our variable, our unknown. Let f represent, let f be father's age today and this is our unknown just one more time just to emphasize that's our unknown son's age is not our unknown so let's see what we know three years ago the scenario that three years from now rather now I keep saying ago it's not ago three years from now three years three years from now three years from now Okay, watch what, watch what happens, pay attention. So if we're going to pretend that father is F years old today, if we're going to pretend that father is F years old today, then three years from now, father would be how old? Well, if he's F years old today, three years from now, it's going to be three years more. It's going to be F plus three. And how old is son today? Son, we are told, we are told in the problem the son is s years old today. If he's s years old today, three years from now is what we're looking at here. This scenario that we're describing here is three years from now. For well, three years from now, son must be s plus three. And what do we know? What do we know happens three years from now? What's the relationship between these two quantities? The father's age and the son's age three years from now. We are told that three years from now, the father will be three times as old. Father will be thrice as old as his son. So whatever the son's age is, if you were to take that quantity and multiply that by 3, that's how old father is. And always remember what the unknown here is. The unknown here is the f. We have to solve this equation now for f and we are done. That's all. Bring the 3 to that side and we are done. So let's open the parenthesis first. So we get 3s plus 9 equals f plus 3. Bring the 3 to that side and f equals... 3s plus 6. That's all. All we have to do now at this point is to make sure that our answer is correct. And how do we make sure that our answer is correct? By verifying it. By verifying it, by plugging in some values for the unknown and solving this problem arithmetically. When you solve the problem arithmetically, whatever answer we get from the arithmetic problem, this quantity that we're claiming is the father's age today, better give us the same answer. Same answer is the one that we're going to get solving the problem arithmetically. Let's do it on the top. So here's the verification. So make up, make up son's age. We do not make up father's age, of course. We do not make up father's age because father's age, is the, father's age is what we are solving for. Father's age is the unknown in this quantity. Son's age was given to us. We were told that son is S years old. Let's give this S a quantity, a figure. 
plug in some value for s. How old do you want sun to be today? Just make up any number you want. I'm going to pretend sun is 12 years old. Let's pretend this is the verification. Let's pretend. Let's pretend. I don't know how to spell pretend. Let's pretend that sun is 12 years old today. Now instead of writing out all of this thing, let's pretend that sun is 12 years old today, we could have simply said, instead of writing all of that out, we could have simply said, let s equal to 12. Because that's what s is, s represents his age today. So let's begin this story. So here's our son, here's the father, here's today, here's today, and here is three years from now. Okay, watch what happens. The story is going to begin now. So if you're going to pretend that the son is 12 years old today, then three years from now he better be 15. If he's 15, then we are told, we were told in the problem that three years from now father is going to be three times as old. If father is going to be three times as old, father better be 45. So here's the, here's the, this is, this, this is the sequence. This is the first step. We pretend the son is 12 years old today. If son is 12 years old today, then he'll be 15 three years from now. If son is 15, then based on that, father better be 45 years old three years from now. That's the second step. Well, if father is 45 years old three years from now, if father is 45 years old three years from now, then today, father, be, father better be 42. That's the third step. This is our answer. Father is 42 years old. Does this quantity give us 42 when we plug in 12 in it? Let's find out. F equals to 3 times 12 plus 6. 3 times 12 is 36. 36 plus 2, sorry, 36 plus 6, but 36 plus 4 would have been 40. It gives us 42. It gives us 42, just like the way it's supposed to. That's how we know that the work is correct. This expression that we came up with, this, this value that we came up with, father's age in terms of S is in fact the correct quantity, 3S plus 6. Because when we solve it arithmetically, it gives us the answer that agrees with the algebraic answer. Let's do one more, shall we? <coughs> Let's do one more. <coughs> Find a number such that find a number such that this is 106 such that the amount by which it exceeds 50 is 12 more then the amount by which it falls short of 100. Now, if you had trouble understanding the problem, I'm going to explain to you in a second. It says, it says that we are to find a number which is to possess two, two characteristics. First characteristic is that, well, it's, 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 it is to possess one characteristic, rather, only one characteristic. The characteristics that it's supposed to possess is that the number has to be such that the amount by which it exceeds 50, the amount by which it exceeds 50, let's say, let's say the number that we're talking about is 65. I'm just going to pretend it's 65, okay? The amount by which it exceeds 50, amount by which it exceeds 50, how much does 65 exceed 50? 65 exceeds 50 by 15. 65, 65 is 15 more than 65 is 15 more than 50. The amount by which it exceeds 50 is 12 more than the amount by which it falls short of 100. 65, 65 falls short of 100 by how much? 65 so falls short 100 by 35. 65 is 35 shy of being 100. That's what it means. 65, one more time, 65 
there are two ways we can say it. The amount by which it falls short, the amount by which it falls short, is same as saying the amount by which, by how much, it is, by how much amount is it shy from 100? How much less is it compared to 100? The amount by which it falls short of 100 is 35. 65, 65 is 35 shy of, 35 shy of being 100. According to this problem, it says we have to find a number such that the amount by which it exceeds 50, which is 15, is 12 more. Is this amount, is, the, is 15, is 15, is 15, 12 more than 35? Is 15, 12 more than 35? The amount by which it exceeds 50 is 12 more than the amount by which it falls of 35. Is 15, 12 more than 35? The answer of course is no. Answer of course is no because the number that we're looking for is not 65. But then what is it? So we don't know. We have to find it. We have to find it. Let's find it, shall we? The question is, do we know how to set it up? Oh, it's very simple. It's very simple. Ask yourself, how much does it exceed? The amount by which it exceeds 50. It exceeds 50. Let, 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 let's first define our variable. Here is our solution. Let's first define our variable. Let x be the number. Let x be the number. So, it exceeds 50. It exceeds... It exceeds 50 by how much? Pretend that x is some value. Just like, just, like, just like before when we pretended that it was 65. If x is 65, then it exceeds 50 by how much? If x happens to be 65, it exceeds 50 by 15. How did you find 15? We just subtracted 65 minus 50. If x happens to be 80, how much does 80 exceed 50? 80 exceeds 50 by 30. How did you find 30? 80 minus 30. So how much does x exceed 50? The answer is it exceeds 50 by, I just meant, I was about to make a mistake. It's not 50 minus x, it is x minus 15 by x. This is how much it exceeds. Because of course, we are, if you're saying that it exceeds 50, then of course it's more than 50. It exceeds 50 by this much amount. And it falls shy, the amount, the amount by which it, it falls short of 100, the amount it falls short of 100 is how much? If you're going to pretend, if you're going to pretend that x is, if you're going to pretend that x is 65, then how much does it fall short? It falls short of 100. How much? It falls short of 100 by 35. How do you find 35? Well, it's just if it happens to be 65, then it's 100 minus 65. If x happens to be 20. If x happens to be 20, how much is huh, the amount by which it falls short of 100? The amount, let me just write this in a little bit more, a little bit better handwriting. The amount by which it falls short of 100. Well, if x happens to be, if x happens to be 20, then 20 falls short of 100 by 80. How do we come up with 80? Well, it's simply 100 minus 20. If x happens to be 1, then how much does 1, the amount by which 1 falls short of 100 is 99. 100 minus 1, you get the idea. So the amount by which x falls short of 100 is 100 minus x. That's the part that you have to understand. That's the most important part. The rest is very easy. The rest is very easy. We just have to say the amount by which it exceeds 50, this is the amount by which it exceeds 50, is 12 more than this amount. If you put an equal sign in between, is that correct? It's not correct. Because the amount by which it exceeds 50 does not equal to the amount by which it falls short of 100. This amount we are told, the amount by which it exceeds 50 is 12 more than this quantity. So how do we put, how do we justify putting an equal sign there? Well, there are two ways you can do, by, uh, there, are, there are two ways you can go about it. One is to take this quantity and take 12 from it, subtract 12 from it, and now they're equal to each other. Or, you can leave this quantity the way it is, but we know that this quantity is 12 more than that quantity. So how do we put an equal sign by in between here? Well, if this quantity is 12, 
if this quantity is 12 more than that quantity, which means this quantity here is 12 short of this quantity, add 12 to it. There you go. Either you can take, a, take away 12 from it and put an equal sign, or add 12 to it and put an equal sign. Either way is the same thing. Either way, of course, is the same thing because if you subtract minus from so, so, subtract 12 from here, then of course, that's, if you bring the 12 on that side, it becomes positive. That's it. We are done. The rest is very easy. Just have to solve for x. So we see an x here. Let's bring it to that side. We see a 50 here. Let's bring it to that side. The rest is very easy. The rest is very simple, very straightforward. Only takes two seconds. Negative 50 and a positive 50 is going to cancel out. X plus x is 2x. And here is where you have to slow down. Negative x and positive x is going to slow, uh, cancel each other out. And here we have three quantities. We have 100, we have 12, and we have 50. 100, 100 plus 50 is 150. 150 plus 10 is say 160. 162. 162. Divide both sides by 2. And x equals 81 x equals 81. The last thing we need to do is verify it. Let's verify it on the top. 81, 81 exceeds 50 by how much? By 31. And 81 falls short of 100 by how much? 81 falls short of 100 by 19. And is 31 12 more than 19? Because that's what we are told. We are told that this quantity exceeds the amount by which it falls short by 12. Is this quantity 12 more than 31? Let's find out. 11, 31, there you go. Voila. The answer is correct. Bye now.